Okay, so good day to you all and welcome to this uh, online class of genetics course in Department of Zoology, Banaras Hindu University for MSc Semester 2. And this is the continuation of the class that we're discussing about the evolution of the constructive team. And as we had seen at that time, that the, as more and more research accumulated about what a gene is in terms of structure and function, the, the, the concept of gene, what we defined way back, has changed dramatically. Now, uh, we also discussed about the, the two things, about how the structure of gene that has evolved and the functional evolution. So we discussed about the structural evolution and the functional evolution. In structural evolution, we discussed how the unit factors were converted into one in one disease, one metabolic block, to one in one gene, one enzyme, to one gene, one polypeptide, and so on. And in the function, we uh, we came to know, or we discussed that the gene which was initially thought not to be divisible by recombination or mutation. And it was, we had the impression it was of beads on string structure. So each gene was represented by a bead separated by a string of chromosome uh, or DNA. And now we know that that's wrong. And a gene or the smallest unit of recombination is one nucleotide pair. And even for the same for mutation, it's one nucleotide pair. So today we'll discuss uh, the how we can define a gene in terms of operation or a unit of operation where uh, you can do an experiment to delimit the length of the gene. So for this we'll, we take advantage of the complementation test which was discovered by E.B. Lewis and his colleagues way back in 1940s. Lewis was a student of uh, Oliver and he, Lewis, went on to receive the Nobel Prize. Now, uh, complementation test, before we talk about the complementation test, uh, we should understand what is com what complementation means. It means that uh, there are two things, both of them are incomplete independently or individually, but they have to combine together, they have to come together, they have to complement each other uh, so that uh, they fit uh, so well that they now function as a normal or individual. So that's complementation. Complementation. Now for complementation test over here, what you should first understand is that, uh, that uh, let's just say we consider two genes over here, M1 and M2. Okay. Now what I've written over here is that there are one three sections, so you don't have to bother about all the sections at the same time. I'll be coming to each one. Uh, 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 so two genes here I have said we are discussing two genes one is M1 one is M2 if there is a wild type allele we denote with a plus sign over there so it's M1 plus and M2 plus and the mutant alleles are M1 and M2 now there are two ways uh, these genes can be arranged the two mutant alleles can be on one chromosome and the two wild type alleles can be on the other chromosome if we have this kind of configuration, it is called as cis or it's called as coupling. And if we have this configuration in which in one chromosome you have one wild type and the other mutant allele, on the other chromosome you have the mutant for the first one, wild type for the second one. So this kind of configuration is called as trans. Now for the complement for a um, for a complementation test, the the results which we obtained are generally from the trans test. The cis test is a validation of that result that we obtained. Now let us consider a situation. What is what is what we mean by complementation? Let's consider a situation where we have first we are considering that these two genes that we're talking about they are in the same. These two um, let's say uh, uh, low side that we're talking about they are in the same gene gene one. So you have gene 1, you have a wild type allele M1 plus, M2 plus and on the other homologue you have the two mutants. Now in this condition what you see over here is that this DNA when it, when it transcribes it, it makes an mRNA. 
Now this mRNA because both of these allele, these points are wild type, so the protein product will be wild type. However, here what you see is this mRNA that is made, there is a mutation over here and this mutation over here. As a result, the protein product either it is not made or it is uh, it is non-functional. Now in this condition, what you see is because we have one of the mRNAs making a completely wild type protein. So this will give you a wild type phenotype, okay? Irrespective of the fact that the other homologue has both the alleles that are muted. On the other hand, now let us consider if these are two different genes. So you have gene 1 and you have gene 2 over here. Gene 1 has M1 plus, gene 2 has M2 plus. And these are the mutant alleles, M1 and M2, okay? Now... What you see over here is because this is M1 plus, this is making a normal product. This is M2 plus, this is making a normal product. Okay. So we have both these genes making a normal product. On the other hand, because of the mutation, this is not making a normal product. Okay. And because of the mutation gene, so this homologue is also not making a normal product. Now in this condition, again, what the phenotype that we obtain will be of wild type because both these genes are making a normal product from one homologue. The other homologue, if it's non-functional, it generally does not matter. So when the two alleles or the two mutants are present in a cis configuration, we always see a wild type, whether they are in the same gene or whether they are in different gene. Okay? So cis configuration always gives you a wild type. Now let us consider the next configuration that's trans. And trans, what we see over here is, now this is gene 1, okay. Now this gene 1 has um, a wild type allele at M1 loci and a mutant allele at M2 loci. And the gene, uh, the other homologue will have a mutant allele at the first loci and a wild type allele at the second loci. Now what you see over here is this product, so M1 it is made normally because M1 is normal. However, there is a mutation in this region. Here, there is a mutation in this region. So both these products that are made, they both have mutant mutations in their loci. So this may result in, in uh, uh, this may result in a non-functional product for both the genes for the two loci. So as a result, here in this condition we see a mutant phenotype. Okay. Now, now consider the, the two genes, gene 1 and gene 2. Gene 1 is made is M1 plus over here, here and this is gene 2 which is M2 plus. Now this gene 1 M, uh, which is M1 plus is making a normal product but this is a mutant, this is M1 so it is not making a normal product. Here this is a mutant is not making a normal product but this is making a normal product okay so what you have over here in this condition in trans condition when the two mutants are in two different genes you have one homologue that is making the normal product in both the genes so as a result now the phenotype that you get will be of wild type okay now this wild type phenotype uh, so, uh, how complementation test helps us to understand whether two alleles or two genes which are uh, which uh, give rise to the same phenotype, whether they are in the same gene or in the different gene. If they are in different genes, a, a complementation test will give you a wild type. So, if you can know that two mutations, whether they are the same gene or not, by looking at the phenotypes. If you get a wild type phenotype, you know they are in cis configuration. If you get a new, um, sorry, yeah, yeah. If you get a wild type phenotype in a trans configuration, you know they are in two different genes. But if you get a mutant phenotype in trans configuration, you know that they are in the same gene. So this way one can understand whether the two genes are on the same or in different chromosomes. Now, what we do is we will look at one example where this complementation test has been used to understand the, uh, the T4 FARC, okay, to find out the different mutations that accumulate in the T4 FARC. 
and as you all know that the in in T4 part there are series of mutations which are called as amber mutations. Amber mutations are those which um, 